I'm gonna explain to you why I did that, plus provide a business channel. Call it a peek behind how a YouTube channel operates and how a YouTube channel operates for views and how a YouTube channel operates for profitability. So with that, let's get begin. I should start with the danger part. If you didn't know, MGTO has been labeled a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Now, I know to many of you that means nothing. To many folks who are not on the internet, who are not part of MGTO, who are not part of Red Pill, that means a lot. I suspect that within two years, many of your favorite MGTO channels and many of your favorite Red Pill channels will be gone. I did a search on some of the channels that I knew from way back when, they're gone. They're literally gone, they've been deleted. So I wasn't MGTO and I wasn't Red Pill, but I had similar information and down at the bottom of my channel was aligned with many of these channels, which is why whenever I put up something that was saying, hey, you know, let's do this, let's take women out, then I would get all this Red Pill rage. And it was very troubling because, as I explained in the other video, I knew of Red Pill and I knew of Big Toe, but I really didn't know what they were saying. So, hate group, Southern Poverty Law Center, demonetization, that was one of the reasons that I got rid of the channel. The second reason, underperformance. I made let's see, probably 17, 1800, no, 17, $18,000 the last eight months from that channel. It sounds good. I could sell a consulting package to two or three people, let's say three or four, and make that. And this includes the delivery, this includes the phone calls, this includes everything. And I still would not put out as much time as I did with the Disruptive Mail channel. So it was clearly underperforming compared to this channel. So that was another reason that I shut it down. And the third reason that I shut it down is I had to teleport back in time to the man that I used to be to understand what you guys are going through. That was painful. I mean, getting stood up, getting flaked, going through this because I would not use any of my protocols. I wouldn't use any of my strategies. I just dated like you guys to see what kind of results I would get. And brrr, they were horrible. And that right there, that messed me up. I went back and I realized, and I understand that my heart goes out to you guys who are going through this, but <clears throat> I can't do that no more. I, I can't. Then the fourth reason that I got rid of the channel was most of my hate was coming from men. Women, not so much. Most of the majority of the people who were dissenters, the majority of the people who were problematic, the majority of the people who would flag my videos, they were men. And that was just puzzling until I delved a little deeper. And the fifth reason that I got rid of my channel. I had almost 6,000 subscribers, right? I got 4,000 of those subscribers the first three months. YouTube has what's called restrictive mode. And if enough people complain, tag your video and they look into it, they begin to restrict the reach of your videos. So essentially my channel grew much faster the first three months than it did the other five. I was getting like 1,500, almost 1,800 subscribers, then poof, restricted mode, going back to the people, the men who were complaining and flagging my videos. That was just a lot to handle. So the channel at some point, and it, it's not a 100% certain, uh, certainty that it would have been deleted, but just on the fact that reach had been reduced, subscribers have been reduced, a uh, time to effort has, it just didn't make any sense to keep making those videos and putting out that channel. There was a, 
a loyal few who loved the channel and I appreciate you guys. There was just wasn't enough of y'all. And I was getting ready to start doing two videos a day, but I was working much harder on that channel than I do on this channel. And I was getting 150th, 160th of the results financially. That didn't make any sense. So what I'm going to do is put together another channel. Uh, it's going to be called the abundant life style. Well, I'm still figuring it out. I'm waiting to get some cover art back, but it's going to be the abundant lifestyle. And I'm going to talk about the man that I'm currently am in my philosophies, um, processes, strategies, and techniques that will be for everyone because disruptive male was designed for men. And once again, there was a lot of really cool people there, positive people, but the haters, the dissenters, they hurt the channel from an organic standpoint. They hurt the channel from a financial standpoint because they want to be me, but they don't want to be me with the work. They want to be me without the work, without going through the trials and tribulations. They just want to be me. And another thing that I find to be disturbing is the massive amount of hate in the red pill and MGTO communities. And I've had people, it's like, there's no hate. I got something for y'all. Y'all are just like the white people, not seeing your races who act like racism doesn't exist. Y'all are like the white people who have a white friend. They know it's racist, who says racist stuff and they don't check them. So you may not be one of those hating, uh, mad, mean MGTO people, but you ain't checking them. Just like, um, the bad police don't, you know, the good police don't check the bad people. They just kind of like wink and nod and let this thing go and go and go. At some point, it's going to hit the head. At some point, it's going to become something dark, ugly. You're going to get people killed. And that right there, that, that hate, that nastiness. And, you know, we get this thing with political correctness. The lack of political correctness means that you can be mean, disgusting, heinous, say nasty things about people. I don't think that's the meaning of the lack of political correctness. Uh, correctness. I think a lot of you are just some bitter, sad, mean folks who have failed at life and you want to vent in these echo chambers online. And as a leader, I refuse to be part of it. I had put out a call to action. Most of the f loyal following, they, they were like, you know, you're right, you're right. But once again, that was just a small core group. And for you guys, I'm gonna try to do something because, you know, essentially I didn't delete the videos, I just hid the channel. And once I figure that out, I'll let you know. But I'm gonna invest my time, my energy, into something more fruitful because being part of the manosphere, a lot of these guys act like women. Mad, don't want to hear reason, don't want to hear a counterpoint. And it gets to be crazy when you think about it because MGTO and red pill are scarcity mindsets. Oh, you don't believe? I've seen enough of these videos. No one is rich. No one's trying to get rich. No one's trying to start businesses. They talk about it. They talk about saving money because they live in an apartment like a hermit. You know, the TV's on a cement crate and all this other stuff. But red pill and MGTO are scarcity mindsets. You're mad because a woman won't give you her affection. You're mad because a woman won't give you her respect. You're mad because a woman will not give you your attention. You're mad because women will not sleep with you. You're mad because you are experiencing a scarcity mindset and a scarcity reality in regards with women. And this is why some of you hate women. Does everyone in the MGTOW and red pill community hate women? No, but a good portion of y'all do. And the guys who don't hate women are not 
checking the guys who do. They're just sitting there, they're commenting. They may say, well, I don't fully agree with your viewpoints, but they don't check these guys because they're afraid of them. Because a lot of them are loose cannons. And with all of those points, that's why I'm, I'm out. This isn't the first time that I left the community. The hustling godfather is real. I was a founding member of the YouTube reseller community. I walked away from it because I saw the craziness that was going to happen. I saw the beauty pageants that were going to happen. Uh, I unsubscribed and took myself out of all Amazon FBA groups because I knew that the whining and the complaining was going to go through the roof and it has. My big problem with MGTOW and red pill communities isn't that you feel the way that you feel. It's valid. My big problem with many of you guys is you have not formulated a plan on how to deal with women other than running away from women. Yes, I say running away, withdrawing, taking yourself out the game, taking yourself out of the arena, scarcity mindset. I am not going to put my feelings out. I'm not going to be a man. I'm not going to love a woman. I'm not going to live with one. I'm just going to remove myself and I'm not going to do anything to mitigate this. When I was in that state, it was disgusting. I didn't like myself. I was full of hate. My ex-wife, one woman, one, just one woman, screwed me over royally and screwed our kids over. But she was the only one. And when I did a catalog of my life, I've only had two really bad relationships. Just two. Just two out of all the women I've been with. Just two. There is, it, it, it's like a lack of objectivity. It's a lot of people all up in their feelings. And honestly, red pill and MGTOW men, you're not acting like men. You're just running away from your problems and expect for them to be solved. But listen here, you are gonna get old. And a lot of this fire and venom and all this stuff and chest beating MGTO for life, red pill philosophy, that's going to change when you're 62 years old. That's going to change when you're 65. Matter of fact, many of you, it's going to change when you hit your 50s. You're going to start making accommodations. You're going to start dating single women. I mean, single mothers. You're going to start being stepdads because you're going to look at your life and you're going to realize you are alone. And that's going to be an ugly thing. Just like many of these cat women and floor print sofa women who went too far and they found themselves without a husband, without children. All they had is a career and that's dicey right now. And just some cats. The kids are looking, they're like, I don't want that. I don't want that. But many of you are going to find out the very hard way. Um, I almost died. And that made a lot of stuff very, very clear for me. And one of the things that became very important to me was fun. I don't do anything that's not fun. If it's no longer fun or I hate it, and I'm going to do a video about this called financial and it's called personal and financial freedom. I don't have just financial freedom. I have personal financial, personal freedom. Like someone uh, left a comment talking about you're too political. This comment, I was like, I don't even know what I said that was political, but I was just like, really? Having personal freedom is I can say what I want. And I also am big enough and an adult to know that if I say certain things that's going to upset certain people, that's called accountability. But I can do that because I'm not going to get fired. I can do that because I'm not going to lose customers. You know why I'm not going to lose customers? Because I put my philosophy and my political views out there from jump so I don't have to worry about selling something and then I tweet something or something on Instagram and then I'm all of a sudden, I'm outed. I out myself. So the foundation which my business is built on enables me to have financial freedom 
and personal freedom. I don't have to act like a scared little bitch that someone's going to find out who the really, who I'm really the fucking, who the fuck I'm really am. Because I'm me. That's the greatest wealth you can have. And all of you is like, hey, you should do this. You should do this. You ain't on my level. You ain't living like I'm living. So why the fuck should I listen to you? It's real talk, as they say out here in these internet streets. Why should I listen to someone who is less successful than me on how to be successful? That makes no sense. And a lot of you do this in the comments under assumed names, under uh, weird avatars because you are afraid to show your face because maybe you feel you're ugly. I got the stats. I know how much people, money people really make. I got the stats. And then also, um, Brandon Campbell, or Brandon Cardo, I believe, Brandon Cardo, he put out an excellent video. I'm going to link to it. There are a lot of you who feel that you can do what I've done without studying. I'm going to say something, and it's going to be very elitist. I'm a smart motherfucker. I learn from my mistakes, and I can look at something and give you an example. I took the fucking television apart when I was a kid and put it back together again. I can see patterns. I can figure stuff out. I can read a book and execute. Most of you can't. And it ain't because you're stupid. It ain't because you're dumb. Our education system has failed you. You don't know how to critically think. You don't know how to put stuff together. You may have had a 4.0 in high school or college, but you come out and you clearly can't do shit because you were bamboozled, led astray. You weren't taught right. So you've got what I call a facade of an education. You really can't do anything. And once again, this ain't your fault. It's the system's fault. It's your parents' fault. Um, you did not get a proper education. And that's why you, because, you know, um, on the Internet, everything's on the Internet, right? If everything's on the Internet and all this knowledge is out here, why is 72% of the country making less than $48,000 a year? If all this information was here on the internet that can help you become healthier, wealthier, why, are not more, why aren't more people doing it? The internet's on your phone. It's everywhere you are. Because you don't know how to take the information and put it together to get the results you want because of your miseducation in public education. That's why. That's why mentors, trainers, teachers, because NFL player, right? Let's take Jalen Hurts. Nick Saban spent two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to get this guy a coach. He can go, Jalen, go on the Internet and watch a bunch of YouTube videos on how to throw a ball. He can say that. Spent 250. He said, Jalen, if you stay, I'm going to get you a coach. I'm going to make you better. And you saw in the SEC championship game, it paid off. Tom Brady has a coach. Virtually every high level performing athlete in the NBA, NFL, M has a coach. They're not watching fucking videos. They have a coach. They have a teacher. They have a mentor. And a lot of you are so arrogant because you don't understand what you don't know that you think you can figure this stuff out. Yet, where are the results? Where are the results? I've said it on my old channel. And I'm going to say it here. I can't get to all the pussy that's available to me because I live in abundance. I don't talk about abundance. I live in abundance. And many of you are faking the funk. Many of you are one of those people doing it for the gram, going out and buying clothes and taking them back because you can't afford them. Where are your results if all this information on the Internet is free and you can get your million? Where are the results, baby? I don't see any results. And I'm going to tell you something. I have been talking about this recession since this time last year. And I said, get ready, get ready. Get ready. And a lot of y'all thought I was talking that smackety smack. I make a video talking about the degree myth. I was right. I make videos and talking about Bitcoin. I was right. I made the, the predictions about this recession. I was right. But for some reason, 
people who don't have any results, who are caught up in their feelings, feel that we're somehow equal because we're both men. I think this was, I forget the guy who said it. To my peers, I have conversations. To everyone else, I educate. Whether you like it or not. And I saw people on other shows who learned something from, I know for a fact they learned certain things from me. And they won't say my name because they don't want to give props to the hustling Godfather. Most of the black folks here on YouTube who learned about resale learned it from me. From 2009 to 2013, they learned that from me. When I was on that storage auction trail, Dave Spivey, Michael Watt, they were not, it was mostly white folks. But once again, in your arrogance, you don't want to give props and that's cool. Because see, sooner or later, it's gonna catch up with you. Whenever I reference some Earl Nightingale, I give reference to where I got it from. I don't have to steal stuff because I realize I don't know what I don't, I realize there's a lot I don't know. That's, all, that's why I'm always seeking knowledge. That's why I'm always reading newspaper, blogs, listening to podcasts, because I know there's so much I don't know. And I know that I'm not going to figure it out by myself. And that was a big problem with disruptive male. A lot of guys, because they look better than me and they were in better shape, they thought they had my game with no results. So that's why I shut it down. I'm going to have something new. I'm going to do a special video about it once I get it set up because I got uh, I talked to the education coordinator this morning. Um, I got artwork and stuff coming. It's going to be radically different and it's going to be about where I'm at now, not what I went through because I'm not the same man I was when. Um, not to 1997, 98. I'm just not that same dude. Just not. And I'm going to speak about abundance about the abundant life that's what i'm gonna speak about it so that's it that's why i shut it down hopefully you understand and once again i will put something together i don't know what and i don't know when because i have to audit my time you have to audit your time you have to say where your time is going and i'll shape something up so with that go below get on this new email list. It's not MailChimp. It's a brand new email list. I've never even sent an email from it. And I will be sending out stuff as it happens. So the link's below. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.